Hello everybody, uh, this session is looking at Maundy Thursday um, and of course we're going to start off by looking at the Last Supper um, as obviously that's what we remember when we think of Maundy Thursday. Now I'm sure most of you have heard of a Holy Communion or a Eucharist and if you haven't um, this is your chance to find out a little bit more about it. We're not going to go into heaps of detail, but we are just going to share what happened um, at, at that Passover meal that we now remember on what is known as Monday Thursday. So Jesus sent Peter and John ahead to prepare the Passover meal. He told them exactly where to go, what house to enter and what to say. They did as Jesus asked and found the house and made the arrangement, arrangements just at, as he had said. Now the disciples all got together to eat the Passover feast. Jesus knew that this would be the last meal he would eat with his disciples before he died. He had bread and wine available on the table. Now I'm sure lots of you will have seen this in church in some way, shape or form. I know lots of different places all do it slightly differently, but they will have some symbol of bread and wine. And, and so I've got that just for you to see as a bit of a visual on the screen. And Jesus would have broken the bread in half at that table and, and said, this is my body. And he'd have given that out to his disciples who were probably really quite confused by, by that statement. But he said, this is my body. And, and when you eat bread, I want you to remember me. Now, I think I might have found that a little bit odd if somebody had sat at the table and said the same thing to me. But I think the disciples over the next few days gradually started to really understand what Jesus said when uh, meant when he said that. And then when he demonstrated with, with the wine, he said, when you drink this, remember that my blood was shed for you. Think, think of this as a symbol of my blood. And so they would have eaten bread and drank wine, processing these words that Jesus would have said to them. Now, actually, we're, we're really blessed that we get to do this really often within our churches. Um, for Christians, they celebrate Holy Communion or Eucharist, whichever you prefer to call it, um, very regularly. Some churches do it monthly, some churches do it weekly, some churches do it even more frequently than that. It just completely depends on where you are, who you're with, what the minister's preference is, what the denomination, which is the type of church, prefers to do. Um, but we do it really often to remember what Jesus did when he died on the cross for us. And Jesus performed the very first Holy Communion at that Last Supper that we now remember on Maundy Thursday. And so that's a really important part of this story. Now, I also wonder if you know why the Thursday just before Easter is called Maundy Thursday, because it's something that I have to remember quite a lot of the time because it's such a weird name for it. But actually, when you look into it, it's not that weird because the word Maundy comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means commandment. And at that meal, Jesus gave a new commandment to his disciples and he said this, I give you a new command, love each other. You must love each other as I have loved you. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. And Jesus obviously showed us the biggest demonstration of love that, that we've ever known when he did what he did at Easter. He also did something a little bit strange when they were all around the table. He took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. 
Then he poured water into a bowl and began to wash the disciples' feet. How would you feel if one of your teachers or your parent was to wash your feet, I wonder? Why do you think Jesus might have done this? Now, in washing of the disciples' feet, Jesus showed us how incredibly humble he is and how much he loves us and respects us and respects others and that he never thought himself more highly than anyone else. Perhaps you could spend some time washing your feet if you have the facilities to do that or even offer to wash a member of your family's feet and think about this part of the story and that real demonstration of love. But if you can't do that at the moment, perhaps next time you're washing your hands, you can remember that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Now, I feel like lots of us know the Easter story, or most of it. We always hear the Palm Sunday story, and we hear of, obviously, Jesus dying and being resurrected. But I don't always feel that we get to hear as much about this next part of the story quite as often. Which is a shame because I feel for me like it's one of the parts of the Easter story um, that really stand out the most. Um, and that's after this meal, Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus needed to pray. He was human, just like we are. And he was really upset at what he had to do. And so he went to the garden with his disciples. And, and he needed to talk to God. He needed to talk to his father and be reassured that God was with him. That God knew what the plan was all along. And that even though that was really hard, he needed to pray just like we needed to pray, that we need to pray. He needed God to hear his prayer. Um, I've just got a short demonstration for you now. In the Matthew version of this story, it says this. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow. And that's Jesus talking about how desperately sad he is. And I just want us to think for a moment how feeling that overwhelmed with sorrow and with sadness might feel. And um, I thought this pouring water reflection might help us to just see what happens when we're overwhelmed or overflowing with an emotion. And so you can see there that the glass is full. And if I pour in even a smidgen more, it will go over the top. Imagine feeling that full of sorrow, that full of sadness, as Jesus did when he went to the garden to pray to God, to pray to his father. How sad he must have felt, and yet he still did what he did for us. Sometimes in life, we have to do things that we're going to find incredibly difficult, even when we know it's the right thing to do. And Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. He was desperately sad about the whole thing, but he knew it was the only way. He prays to God, your will be done. He wants to obey God and do what God is asking of him. Let's maybe just have a moment of quiet to reflect on that story.
as a little reflection activity on Maundy Thursday, uh, we have put this together that says, your will be done, which is obviously what Jesus says in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, there's a few instructions around this tree. Uh, there's a downloadable one of these on our website if you'd like to print it off. If you don't have access to a printer, please feel free to draw your own tree. Um, and all of the instructions are written around it um, on this piece of paper. Uh, but it just suggests perhaps using Play-Doh or paint to add leaves to the tree. And whilst doing that, maybe thinking of people um, that you want to pray for, you could perhaps ask God's will to be done in their lives. Um, if you don't have any Play-Doh, maybe you could do some finger painting to add leaves. Um, and, or if not, you could just draw them on. Um, but the other thing would be to maybe as you're putting leaves on the tree, think about those things that you're worried about. Um, lots of us have have worries. We have things that we find really hard in our lives and it's okay to um, give them over to Jesus. Um, let's not deal with our worries by ourselves. Um, or as you're putting extra leaves on the tree, you can just be sort of putting those worries down, thinking about them, putting them down, on the tree. Let's pray together to finish. Jesus, you showed us how to love. Help us to love others in the same way that you love us. Help us to do the right things, even when things are really difficult. Thank you for the incredible sacrifice you made for us in your precious name. Amen. We have another memory verse for you to help remember this session on Maundy Thursday. And um, it says this, love one another as I have loved you. And that's taken from John chapter 13, verse 34. So if you would like some actions to go with this memory verse, um, we can put um, our hands across our heart like this for love one another open your hands out as if you're gesturing other people as I point towards yourself have loved the same action you point out okay so let's do that all together love one another as I have loved you John 13 34 34 okay so all together love one another as I have loved you. John 13, 34.